Hello? You are. Well, I'm pretty good. I'm not getting my strength back very well. Oh, I'm sorry. I well, I, I met with Edward Dirksen a while ago, and he told me he was sitting next to you this morning. He just enjoyed it and uh, told me we had a nice little meeting. And well, as long as I'm sitting down, you know, and uh, working on a desk, I have no trouble. But it's uh, any um, unusual or quick uh, action, and I feel a little bit... Saw so you on color television, though, and you just look wonderful, just like you coming back from the war. <laughs> yeah. To... I tell you, Mr. President, I didn't want to bother you too much, but uh, I just wanted to make sure there was no misunderstanding. I noticed that a senator the other day questioned why I didn't... Uh, give you in detail any plan I had for liquid in the war in Vietnam. And I insisted that I have no plan, that that is the responsibility of the President of the United States and not mine, that whenever my counsel has been asked, I have always advocated getting enough to win because our purpose was noble and proper and so on. And I have said that if I were in is it back in the position where I was uh, a few years back? I would just play on the basis of, of winning, and winning as quick as I could. Now, the only thing I've ever said that has any that they can make anything of, and it has to do only with domestic things, I've said, I think the winning of the war should be the number one priority problem. And I agree with it, and I understand it. You ought to waste one minute of your valuable time with uh, what you've got ahead of you to ever call me, because there's been nobody in this government that's been more valuable to me and been more comforting to me than you have, and I'm trying to win it just as fast as I can in every way that I know how, and I know that you won't help me. And if I, if I figured there's one little thing to do, I'd have good pastor over there in five minutes. I wouldn't pay any more attention to Mansfield's speech, and if it hadn't been made, because Mansfield and Fulbright and a good many of them uh, frequently uh, well, they don't know any. say these things, and it's all right to, for them to tell us how to run a war. And then when you say, well, I, I'm not, I don't have the information, I don't want to take the president's duty, and I don't, I'm not an armchair general of the sideline, and I think that's a very proper position. I have told them... Uh, in the meetings that at times I've asked your judgment and talked to you about various things, and every time I've found it to be wise and good and when we could uh, give you the facts and uh, uh, a given situation, uh, ask you if you had any uh, recommendations that you'd give them through channels, and General Good Pastor brings them back. So don't you pay one bit of attention to anything anybody says. If there was a patriot, you are it. And uh, I'm awfully thankful to good Lord who spared you so you can help me and I'm going to need all of it I can get and what they talk about they got mad at Nixon Nixon got out and said we ought to increase the ground forces 25% and then he said we're getting them in the land war we ought to get in more with bombers and he changes each day or two it and Mansfield got irritated with him and I don't get irritated anymore I just kind of like you do <laughs> I just, I just, I just, what bothers me is you see, in the in the uh, Korean War, these people are trying to say, now you said so-and-so in the Korean War. I said, my friends, no two military situations are the same, and no two political situations. Here is a war that is the most nasty and, uh, and uh, unpredictable thing we've ever been in, and it's just as much political as military. Therefore, when I said in uh, Korea, I didn't say I'd use atomic bombs, I said, that I would no more be inhibited or limited by the gentlemen's agreements that had been pre uh, prevailing up to the time I got there. That if we had to bomb the Yalu bridges or going over to the uh, bases in uh, China where this stuff was coming from, I'd do it. And I'd use whatever weapons were necessary to win. Now, I've sent that through three different uh, avenues. And we got done. I said, unless this is going to be done, unless the arms is signed. Well, now, the conditions. At that time, we had a practical monopoly of all bombs. And there was no, the conditions are not the same. But the war is different, and now they're trying to say the way you want me to say, wouldn't I raise atomic bombs? No. I said, nobody could make such a decision except the President of the United States, and I'm not even going to attempt it. That's right. But I, I just want to point out that I never vary from my stand that this is your responsibility. If I have any ideas that to what we should do or could do, I communicate them to you through the channels. That. And whenever I have to say about that may sound critical, it's merely 
that I want uh-huh. to win the uh-huh. damn war before I could go to the moon or anything else. General, you never, you, you, you just, you said what I think. And, uh, you told me this, you may have forgotten it, but the first visit you made to my office when I talked to you in Vietnam over in the old executive office building, you told me that you sent word to, through uh, Dulles to Nehru that you were not going to be uh, bound by <clears throat> any sanctuaries or any weapons that you were going to do what is best for your country and you want to bring it to an end. And you didn't get specific or anything. You just said, let that word get around. And Bob Anderson told me that he heard the same thing, and I think it was a proper thing. And they're trying to get you to say that you won't drop an atomic bomb on somebody. And we know that you you don't do anything uh, uh, that's not well thought out. They wanted me to say that I want to tell you publicly how to run this war, and I just think I won't do it. <laughs> well, I I sure if you, I, I, I need all the help I can get, so you... <laughs> I say, I'm, they, the president knows I'm always available. I know that. And I'm just not going to uh, be in the position of dividing the United States at a time when it needs unity. I know that. You, that you, you've always shown that. And I told uh, Everett Dirksen this morning, he said he made a little statement this morning, said we got one blood out there and one flag and one uniform. And I said, well, I've been paid a thousand percent. I said, Everett, do you remember when I used to have to stand up and Bill Nolan go in the back row and attack the president? I'd stand up and do it. He said, you sure did. I said, well, I've been paid a hundred percent dividends for three years now. Okay, well, I just wanted you, Mr. <laughs> President, to know that all this damn stuff is just annoying to me. Well, don't let it, please don't let it do it, because I, I know how you feel and what you think, and if I ever get annoyed by anything, you'll be the first one I talk to, and I never have been, but you've never done anything but help me, sir. Okay, thank you my, very much. My love, Ms. Eisner. Thank you.